Hello all. Myself, Raghav Valia. I'm working as a software engineer in Geeky and from last five years. So today I'm going to talk about how to manage dynamic ENVs in our React Native application. So and thus how we have simplified our build generation process. So most of us must be already aware of what is environment variable uh, here. So environment variable is nothing just like a normal variable where we can store any uh, API uh, endpoints or any global things where we need to access them uh, throughout the app. And uh, but we should not uh, ideally store any uh, secret things in that uh, because it's any sensitive information in that because it can be easily decoded from the source code and can be easily accessible. So we need to be mindful uh, what exactly do we need to store inside uh, env files. And we have uh, a bunch of options. So in React Native, uh, we are using right now React Native config. Uh, but for web applications, we can use .envs as well to store. So moving on to uh, the next slide, um, this is the introduction. So uh, what we are working right now in our project is a React Native application which supports multi multiple regions basically. So we have uh, two apps uh, basically from single code base and they both support different regions. So one is just for three specific regions and the other one is for one particular region. Uh, I, can't, I can't mention the names over here, but there are like, uh, to summarize, we have four apps, uh, like two for Androids and two for iOS. And handling and managing their builds was a, a difficult task because, and it's a very time consuming if we create the builds for them manually and or maybe via CACD, which I'll come later in the PPT. And we also have, uh, as usual, uh, a bunch of different environments uh, because it's a huge fintech app. So we have uh, development QA and pre-prod and prod setups. So moving on, this is like just a brief introduction. So the main thing, how we have handled uh, separate app configurations from a single code base. So if you see, uh, we can utilize, I'm, I'll just talk about the Android stuff uh, because for iOS, it's uh, a lot of time consuming thing to handle uh, multiple apps from a single code base. Uh, for Android, hope this is uh, visible. So in Android, there's uh, something called product flavors and flavor dimensions where we can uh, add on any number of apps uh, basically to if you want uh, the multiple apps to run from the single code base the major thing you need is the different ui elements and that the app icons uh, the logos those are all the basic things to different differentiate between um, two apps right so what is this like if you go uh, i have uh, in the screenshot if you can see android uh, build.gradle there we can specify product flavors and add our app. So I have named it like app one and app two. And there I have added their dimension as app type because they both are the apps. And if we want the app to run on different, uh, to use different environment files, then we have something called env config files at the top where we can specify any environment files for each mode uh, for development, for staging, for prod as well, right? And we are using React Native Config, as I told earlier, to support, uh, to inject our env files into the build at the build time. So now in the next slide, I'll show you how we are running and building the app. So we have to, because it's two apps, uh, two for Android, two for iOS, we have added some uh, generic scripts over here to run the app, which you can see here, we are fetching environment file from for example, for first app, we are fetching it from app one dev and then doing React Native run Android to run that app. The variant we can specify it, it will, if it's a debug or a release mode. Uh, debug mode will require, of course, a metro builder and the release mode, we, if we want to give an uh, APK or uh, to uh, maybe some testers or something, we can also create the build in release mode, right? And the, that's the basic stuff uh, for release mode. We uh, yeah, definitely need the key stores file for Android to save it and yeah, and the key passwords accordingly. So this is just a basic setup of how we run and build the two apps simultaneously, right? And moving on to the uh, next slide. So this uh, here, I will talk about challenges uh, of manual build generation, like how it's uh, affecting our day-to-day -day, uh, time. Right, so it's a uh, first point is of course, uh, extremely time consuming process. 
because for Android, if we want, we need to create the APK and uh, AAB also, if you want to upload it to internal test, test uh, internal release on Play Store, right? Uh, so we need to do this for four apps, uh, if you want to release it like bi-weekly or at some time. And it's also a major uh, potential for errors and inconsistencies. If we, for example, if we have a misplaced one ENV variable in the ENV file, then we need to re-trigger the build again because it won't work at the runtime. Right? It's also resource intensive and have to create four app builds every time just for QA environment. So that's what I talked about, right? Uh, and then uh, this is also a time consuming process if we need to upload them to internal testing and for ios we are using test flight so in order to upload them for qa team as well and now we'll talk about how we can automate this manual build generation process uh, with a bunch of tools so uh, yeah uh, this is about how we set up automatic builds and also ensure smooth delivery to the stores so we have a bunch of options right, to integrate CI, CD in any React Native application. Uh, like uh, the most common ones are like Bitrise, App Center, Code Magic, and Expo App Services. Uh, it will work just for Expo apps. But in our project, we have a native uh, React Native application. right? And in our project, we are using App Center. So I'll explain briefly about uh, what's the benefits of using App Center. So uh, as uh, if you are not aware, so App Center is a complete tool CICD tool where we can automate our build processes and deployments, right? We have an option of static environments as well, uh, just you we talked about uh, environment variables, right? So we can specify our environment variables in our build configuration for any branch, maybe for QA or for production, and it will inject those ENVs at the build time whenever we trigger a uh, build for the app. So yeah that's about it and it has a cross platform su support so it supports android ios and other platforms as well and it has integration with development tools so for example uh, we have integrated with our bitbucket pipelines so whenever we push our code to first for example say qa branch so we get to know an app center uh, there's a change in qa branch and we can start trigger a pipeline uh, trigger a build to uh, create the apks and ips uh, for ios and it has crash reporting and analytics features as well where we can see if you have any crashes or uh, build failures etc and one of the main advantages of app center is over the air updates so this is something called code push where we can uh, just update if you have uh, any javascript file related change right in your source code you can just directly push it to the end users to to the live app without doing any review process of the play stores or app stores right it will directly give users to force uh, force update pop up basically to and that will update their apps on the end at our at a very quick time so it uh, helps in our whole deployment uh, process and then we have customizable build configurations uh, for different branches. For production, we can specify different variables. For QA, we can specify different variables, right? All those things. And it's easy to scale, and it's a very reliable source. So uh, this is uh, what we are using right now uh, as App Center, right? So now there come some problems and some issues in our project where App Center couldn't help. So I'll move on to next slide. So there's this one use case in uh, our project where App Center can't help is this. So the main problem is how we are going to sync the backend and the mobile de deployments together at the same time. Because if you talk about React Native, we have uh, one uh, limited uh, time uh, for the app review process because we can't just directly upload the apps on the stores instantly, right? The Google and Apple team take some time for the app review process. And they and and, and during that phase, the your app should be working fine. It should not be break, uh, should not break. Otherwise, they will reject your uh, review. Right. So and we can't deploy our backend first because uh, most of the for like for the end users, if we do just a backend deployment, the mobile code doesn't support that features yet. Right. So it will break. We can't even do that. So our main problem was this, how we'll sync up the backend and front end deployments. And yeah, we already covered uh, the review process of the builds. It varies. Uh, usually takes from one or two days to maybe it can take weeks for Google and Apple team to review your builds. So moving on. 
to the next slide. So yeah, the solution we cannot like it's not feasible in our case to do the at the same time, right? The backend and uh, front end deployments, but we can utilize the dynamic env environments in this case. And I'm going to tell you how we have done that in our project. So first of all, we need to segregate our the dynamic things and the static things. So dynamic, as the name suggests, is anything which changes with the environments. For example, for QA and for production, the the basic thing is like the API keys, the API endpoints, they change for every environment, right? And the other one is static, which don't change with any ENV. So we what we have done is we have kept our static environments inside App Center config, which is basically injected at the build time. Whenever we trigger a QA or prod build, right, all those static ENVs will go in our build. And we can't change that later because it will require another build. And what we have done is we have used AWS Secrets. AWS Secret Manager is a tool which helps you manage and retrieve and rotate DB credentials. So basically here it's a secure tool where we can store our sensitive information about the project. For example, API keys and other secrets like uh, DB credentials or anything where we, any sensitive information basically we can store it in there, right? And in our case, we have stored some environment variables like uh, API endpoints where we need them to be handled dynamically for a uh, prod build, right? So we have used this, there's this package, AWS SDK, Client Secrets Manager, and we have integrated that in our React Native app to fetch those ENVs uh, dynamically. So I'll move on to the next solution. This, hope this is visible. Uh, here I will explain you how we have managed and like optimized our deployment strategy now. So what we uh, are doing right now is we first merge all backend changes. Like this will briefly give you an overview of how we are handling first backend deployments and then the mobile build uh, deployment on the front end side. Right. So first of all, we'll do merge all backend changes to QA branch. So this will like uh, in QA because uh, uh, or for the stores, right? We create a build, mobile build from main branch. Main is for production, and but we need the backend uh, is of needs must be of QA environment, right? Because uh, we can't do the backend deployment first; it will be uh, affect the end users. So, in order to uh, support the Google and Apple team while they are doing the review process, we need the app to be fully functional. And in that case, the our front end mobile code is of production branch. But our backend it points to QA because QA is stable and we have all developed all features on that and moved it to QA. And QA teams also give sign off on the QA, right? So we have done merge backend changes to QA branch. Then what we are going to do is merge all front end mobile changes to main branch. So this is really creating a production build, right? And before creating mobile build, we have, so we are using one uh, flag, you can say. This is also API version. Uh, it's an environment variable basically, and it's an app center and uh, both in AWS secrets as well, right? So I'll explain you about this API version in a few minutes. Then we do what we do, like submit the build for review. Now our uh, mobile front end code is pointing to production and our backend is still on QA. So app will work fine for the review during review process. Once builds are approved, right? We, what we do is merge backend changes to main essentially like doing base um, backend production deployment. Now we have the builds approved. Now we can proceed with the backend prod deployment and instantly we can uh, up, submit our apps on the stores as well, right? Uh, what is now the published mobile build will be pointing to prod backend uh, because we are fetching those service URLs, right? The API endpoints dynamically from AWS secrets manager. Now we don't need to trigger a build again because we have already submit the production build to Apple and uh, Google stores, right? And we are fetching those uh, secret, uh, those uh, API endpoints from the AWS secrets, right? So whatever we earlier they used to point to QA, now after our apps are submitted and approved, we will change those values pointing to production uh, environment in the backend. So basically what in internally is happening in the mobile app, we are now fetching all those backend service URLs from AWS secrets, which is pointing to production. So this is how we have managed both that time constraint between the uh, review time uh, on stores and for the end users as well, because it, we can't, uh, they, uh, the app should not break for end users as well, right? During this review timeline. 
So moving on to this next slide, uh, what are the results and conclusions of fetching uh, dynamic ENVs uh, and React Native, right? So first of all, this is reduction, huge reduction in build generation time. This is uh, App Center pros, like we have, uh, we don't need to uh, create builds manually and improved consistent consistency and reliability of builds. So whenever we want to trigger any QA build or pro build, we can just ha have, we already had our uh, ENV set up in App Center config. We can just trigger the builds and directly upload them to stores if required. And we also have the options to release our app uh, either on test flight or on place to release directly from App Center itself. Right, and the other thing, minimize human errors. Because we are not sharing ENVs, they are hard coded now in App Center or if for some cases in AWS secrets, any developer doesn't need to access those values, right? They already save for different QA and main R branches. So it's uh, at the same level. So there's no scope for errors, human errors. If any value, suppose, for example, if we change some value, we need to update that at one place. No, every team member should not do that. So this also enhances our security because they are easily secure at a global level, right? And enhance scalability and flexibility. So we can add multiple branches in it. And if you want to add more in ENVs, for example, development QA, pre-prod, UAT, or any stuff like that, we can do that. It's easily scalable. Save development hours a lot of times, yeah. And it helps in speedy delivery of testing builds. So we can. Uh, maybe if depends on the requirements, if you want to create a weekly, bi-weekly releases to a QA team, then you can easily do that uh, via uh, App Center. So I think I've covered all. And yeah, thank you so much. for. If you have any questions, you can catch me around in the office. If you're in office playing the pool, <laughs> or you can reach out to my socials. Thanks. Thank you.